This story about Lapis, the Egyptian cat, is dedicated to Eleanor, whose family support us on Patreon. If there is one thing you can say about me with absolute certainty, it is this. I am a singular cat. What do I mean by singular, you ask? What I mean is that I have to be the one. And what I mean by that is that I have to be the only one. Sharing is not something that I do. I am unique, you know. If you looked at the thousands of the scraggy flea bags lounging around on the steps of the temple to the great cat goddess Bastet, you would find it hard to tell one from another. But I am different. I have blue eyes. I am super smart. I am a magical cat. So when the priest Amon said to me, Lapis, how would you like to have a sweet little sister friend? I said, no way. Amon shook his head and told me, well, that's too bad, but you will get used to her sooner or later. And if Lady Bastard is willing, you might even grow to be friends. Friends? I did not like the sound of that. I am a cat, not a manky fawning dog ready to be anyone's best mate. We cats don't do friends. All day I felt sick and anxious. I even puked up into the River Nile. And that evening my worst fears came true. Eamon brought home another cat. He spilled the sandy-coloured creature out of a wicker basket and she sprang onto the floor. She stood staring at me, her back arched, a hostile gleam in her green eyes. The chick in my house! This is unnatural, I protested to Eamon. You can't keep two cats living under one roof. Any fool knows that. All we will do is fight. But Eamon shook his head and said, The goddess commands it. So, the other cat, Cleo, stayed. Next, we eyed each other up and walked around in circles. As we cats do when we don't like each other, which is often. She hissed. I hissed back twice as loud. And Eamon, would you believe it, threw a shoe at me. He had never treated me like that before. Oi, none of that hissing, he shouted. You'll be a nice cat to your new sister friend. She hissed first. I meowed back. I don't care who started it. Don't do it, he scolded grumpily. Well... Now I was deeply offended. Wouldn't you be? I sloped moodily out of the house. But don't think I was retreating. Not I, Lapis, the magical cat. No, it was the time of day to lie on the roof and catch the evening sun as the Lord Ra gently tugged it down behind the horizon. I stretched out and felt my arms and legs go flop. Prrr. What is there to worry about when the gentle rays of the late sun are heating your body? Everything is easy. Total relaxation. Blank brain. And then suddenly, what's this? It's like somebody has lassoed my tail. I'm being pulled backwards along the roof and... Meow! I'm falling. I land, as we cats learn to do, with a spring in my legs. But still, it's quite a shock. I looked up 
and saw that sandy-coloured little imposter cat creeping along the roof to my sunny spot. And she was chuckling to herself. Then I knew what had happened. She had used magic on me. The minx! How dare she? Well, two can play at that game. I'll soon show her. I'll put such a spell on her. I know what I'll do. I'll... Oh, well, I can't think of any spells right now. But I will take a peek in Amon's magical book and find something suitably mean. Later that evening, after half a fish for dinner... Yes, you heard that right. Half. That's what comes of sharing. I went into Eamon's room and sprang up onto his desk. I turned the pages of his special book with my paw, peering at the magical letters. It is a good thing we cats see well in poor light. Eamon came in and said, Studying late, are we? That's a good cat. I did not reply. I was too intent on searching through the pages for something suitably nasty. Unfortunately, most of it was nice stuff, like cures for warts or spells, to make a person look ten years younger. But nothing to my taste, unless I adapted something. A spell to make you grow up tall. Hmm... The ingredients and quantities were for a human child, but what if I mixed them with cheese, added a touch of rapid root to make the impact more sudden, and left the magic food in the corner for a mouse to find? It seemed like an interesting idea. So that's what I did. And then I crept outside the house to wait and watch, and wow! It worked better than I could have hoped for. The result was so spectacular. The screams were so satisfying. The speed at which the sandy-faced cat legged it was impressive. She shot out of the house and down the street, pursued by a giant mouse. I thought that was the last of her. But you've got to hand it to that cat. She does not give up easily. She came skulking back early in the morning. I was lying at the foot of Eamon's bed in my rightful place. I opened one eye and said, Don't you even think of jumping up here or you'll regret it. But she was angry and mean with it with a screech that reminded me of the awful musician who plays in the temple. She sprung up onto the bed, teeth and claws flashing. Then there was a fight worth watching. Eamon was shouting to us to stop, but neither of us was in the mood for making peace. It might have been a fight to the death if he hadn't chucked a bucket of water over us both. As it was... We were both bitten, bleeding and scratched. That's it, he said furiously. I've had enough of you two. First thing in the morning, you must both report to the goddess. Now, although I count Lady Bastet as my friend and supporter, I did not fancy going to her with a bad report. She's a goddess. And when she's angry, her wrath is something terrible. She can clap thunder and strike you with lightning from a clear, cloudless sky. Plagues of locusts or mice or fleas. They are all her style. You name it, she can do it. I thought of running away. But there was no point in hiding from Eamon, let alone the all-seeing goddess. We tried pleading and reasoning and whining piteously, but Eamon was deaf to our pleas. He put us in two separate baskets and carried us to the temple. There he knelt before the statue of the Lady Bastet, the great cat goddess. 
and kissed her stone feet. Her eyes opened. They were awesome, piercing blue. We two cats were both trembling like we had the chills. Oh, great one, he called out. I followed your orders and put these two cats together, but all they do is screech and fight. I can't stand it any longer. They're driving me to distraction. What shall I do? said Lady Bastet. I am very disappointed in you two young cats. Lapis, you are very talented, but lazy and do not apply yourself to your lessons. Cleo, you do not have the same natural ability at magic as Lapis, but you work hard. I thought a little healthy competition and some cooperation would bring out the best in you both. But it seems that you are not capable of rising above your feline natures. You would both rather fight each other than unite and take on evil in the world. Please, Lady Bastet, we did not mean to. I whined. Silence! She screeched. You both have one last chance. You can be sister friends and help each other, or you can go back to the temple courtyard and hang out with all the other stray hungry cats and take your chances with a priest who might well make you into mummies and sell you to the tourists. No, no, please, we both pleaded. Be merciful, great goddess. Mark my words, one last chance, she told us before closing those divine eyes. Amon gave us both a stern look and led us back to the house. When we were both back home, standing in the front room, Cleo looked at me. Friends, she asked. Yes, I said trying not to spit. Sister friends. This is Bertie, and that story about Lapis, the Egyptian cat, was read by Natasha for Story Nori. And I'm delighted to dedicate this story to Eleanor, known to her friends as Ella. And I was really interested to learn that Ella, along with her parents, Katesy and Andy, listen to Story Nori when they go hiking in New England. And they suggested a story about sister friends. In other words, close friends for a girl who is only a child. Well, Ella, thanks very much for the great suggestion. And thank you to you and your family for supporting Story Nori on Patreon.